Welcome back to the messy workbench. A while ago I was measuring this elbow and noticed that that has quite a bit of attenuation. So the quality wasn't very good. And my conclusion is not to use these elbows. But somebody and was mentioning that instead of these no names, if we get a brand name, uh, elbow if that would make any difference and if there are better quality elbows that actually have less uh, effects in the signal degrading effects doesn't it, um, uh, <clears throat> doesn't uh, attenuate the signal as much so the brand name that comes to everybody's mind is um, um, Amperol uh, let me see if I can get that in here Amperol, I pronounce it wrong, probably. So I bought one, actually I bought two in a set here. That's another one. So let's go ahead and see if that makes any difference compared to this generic cheaper one. The price difference is somewhat significant on this, those connectors. So it's definitely not an easy purchase. So let's go ahead and check it first on the uh, <clears throat> on the SWR meter, and then we check the attenuation on the spectrum analyzer. So just to calibrate things, right now I we're just checking on two meters. That's gonna be the worst band for these connectors anyway. Um, as a reference point, just like last time. So I have here a dummy load connected to my antenna analyzer and we get a SWR of 1.3. So let me go ahead and do again the measurement with the no name and then the measurement with the two um, brand names. Uh, let me go ahead and mark this marker here. So this is one and the screw is the other one. So we can differentiate those two since they look exactly the same. So let's go ahead and put the no name into the system first. Okay, the no name elbow is in and we get a SWR of 1.5. Let's go ahead and put in the first one of the Amperols. So I picked the first one of the Ampenol. Uh, I will pronounce this all the time here. So we have that into the system and we check the SWR is 1.14. So definitely better than the no name. Not perfectly, so it still has like 0.1. SWL that we got. Let's put in the next one. Okay, we installed the second one right here and we get 1.13. So that's pretty cons consistent. Our sample unfortunately is fairly small, so we just have two of the quality ones and one of the cheap ones here to compare. But let's go ahead and check out how much decibel that really means. For that, I have the test set up right now, just straight through. And we're gonna hook the device under test right here. So we need to calibrate everything. So we're gonna reset the spectrum analyzer. On the frequency, we're just interested in the two meter band right now. So we set start frequency to 144 megahertz and the stop frequency to 140 what was it? Yeah, 148 <laughs> megahertz. And we turn on the trigger generator. Sorry for the wire here. Let me see if I can move the wire out of your way. Maybe, oh, of course, when I tighten it, it goes worse. Okay, we'll work around this. 
So we go turn on the trigger generator. Then we normalize it. So now we have that set as zero dB. And we're gonna put in the device under test. So the first one is I'm gonna take this one and put that the unknown into I mean the no name into our testing setup. Okay, it's in this testing setup and looking over here we turn on the marker so we can see something and right here we see across the line it is a hundred and seven uh, sorry 1.7 1.8 db let me go ahead and press the display and turn on the text screen this is not the line the line needs to be off okay Let's go back to the marker. Okay, oh, yeah. there we see it. A little bit bigger. So now we see pretty close to two decibel. It is across the two meter band here. So let's go ahead and check what we get for these two connectors. Okay, I took the first one, put that in line. And looking up here, we definitely see across the board, it is significantly lower. So if you go, we definitely see 0 0.0234, very, very low, I would say. Let's go ahead and see if that also true with the second one. So I hooked up the second one in here and looking at the spectrum analyzer, we again get a perfect reading here. That one might actually be slightly lower. Now connection. So the moral of the story definitely is that the Amperol, the brand name, did outperform this mystery connector that I got. Um, question is, are there other connectors that would have performed better? Possibly, possibly not. Are there emperor connectors that would perform worse? Um, yeah, probably they have to worry about their name. So maybe they did do testing on all of them and their quality is across the board better. Um, my sample was too small to make a cross the board decision, but it does show that there are connectors out that are bad and connectors that are good and can be used. I hope to see you at the next video.